growth. All right, screen share. Quit that. Quit that. All right, you guys see everything all right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I switched to one person and, uh, well, I guess we'll start with you, Al. Oh, okay. Al Crawford. Oh, at, okay. at Al Medlin. All right. Oh. Oh, how cute. Very nice. <laughs> I love uh, their eyelashes. As I said, <laughs> I the the camera I just got rid of was was a uh, Canon 7D Mark II, and uh, uh, I I really love the camera, uh, and uh, I forget which lens this was. I think it was my 150 to 600 uh, uh, Tamron, right. but. Uh, if you will look, those specks around the uh, uh, giraffe's face are not dust spots, they're flies. Mm -hmm, I figured. <laughs> yeah. but, get but, rid of those too. <laughs> well, I could get rid of them, but I thought they, they, they made an interesting feature. Uh, I did, uh, when I prepared this one, for showing, I did reprocess it, and the sky was bland, and so I replaced the sky. And uh, uh, I, I think I used uh, uh, Luminar sky replacement. Hmm. Yeah, there's an adjustment in Luminar to, to kind of pull this aura in that you're getting. Um, there probably is. Yeah, yeah, because. That was the first thing I noticed. I thought, eh, it's probably a different sky. Yep. Well, second thing, first thing I noticed was these. <laughs> I thought, it's a little <laughs> big for dust. <laughs> yeah. Looks good, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and it looks like it, it, it creeped a little through here, too. But yeah, all that yeah, stuff is adjustable. You just got to play with it. Yeah, I see a little in the ears, too. So, yep. But what a great shot. Yeah. Do you think these are real eye eyelashes? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. This this was taken in Africa. In in fact, all of the pictures today were are African pictures. Ah, okay. Were you in Kenya, Tanzania, or, or further south? Uh, that one would have either been Tanzania or uh, Kenya. Probably oh, can okay. you? Oh, okay, good. But this would be East Africa. Yeah, yeah. So, so you uh, you did like uh, Masamara and Serengeti and all those really nice right. parts. Ambicelli. Yeah, yeah. I did that in the seventies. It was wonderful. That that yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what a nice shot. Okay, let's look at this next one. Bird. Wow. That's a pretty bird. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a type of barbet. There's about 30 species of barbets in South Africa. I had to look this up. That is possibly a type that the species name is actually red and yellow barbet. Hmm. Uh, and, and I can say that's a red and yellow barbette, whether that's the right one or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a true birder. And so I like pictures of birds, particularly pretty ones like that. Uh, but, uh, uh, and, and it, it's, a, it's a relatively small bird, uh, probably, double the size of a finch or something like that. Ah, okay. What do you think about either toning down or eliminating this this one branch on the left here? I, did I think about it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did I and, think with it? <laughs> and, and it was, it was a maybe and maybe not. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and I decided to just go ahead and leave it. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, and obviously I could have, I, I know how, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it adds balance, so maybe just darkening it up a bit so your eye doesn't wander so much. Yeah. Yeah. Just a thought. Anybody else? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, Don. Yeah, we're taking it out. Yeah. Yeah. Just a personal opinion. Yeah. You might want to bring the whites down a little bit by the red area on his head. It looks like it's blown out a little bit. Over here. Yeah, it might be. Uh, I'm having great success with camera raw pulling the details back in. Boy, boy yeah, and, and these are all, of course, shot in raw, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm guessing you probably, uh, probably <clears throat> processed this one at some time back and, and you know a lot more about what you'd like to do now. Uh, ac actually, I, I didn't on this one. I, I oh. left it pretty much like I processed it originally, yeah. which means I could have processed it better now. Exactly, yeah. I know uh, every time I go back to old stuff, it's like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I can't <laughs> do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, Actually, on on some of them, you just didn't have the equipment to do do it. On That's a true too, and the masking was really uh, uh, the, archaic the, uh, compared to now. The, the software we have now is is ridiculously fantastic. Yes, <laughs> yes, this latest version is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ugh, what a beauty this one is. That's a nice one. Very nice. Wow. That is a lilac, I know this one, that's a lilac breasted roller. Hmm. And, and there's a number of species of rollers, but this particular one is lilac breasted and, and for an obvious reason. And uh, uh, the first time I went to Africa, uh, there was a lady on that trip that was wanting to take pictures of lilac breasted rollers. Her goal was to take pictures of lilac breasted rollers. And we spent two weeks and the last day or day and a half while we were out in the field, we finally got one, but not a, not a good shot. The next time I went to Africa, they were all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't, she she wasn't around, <laughs> but I did. I did send her the pictures that some pictures that I had of it. But, oh, that was nice. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know whether she was she liked it or not liked it that I sent them to her because it might have been uh, just rubbing it in. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's true. That's true. What do you think about losing some of that sky on the top? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, something. that's probably correct. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would help. There we go. So when you guys crop, do you crop to print or just crop for how it looks good? I, I have a tendency to crop uh, uh, to print size, but for the most part, for example, I never printed this one that I know of. And so uh, I should have just cropped it to look. Uh, uh, good. I might even crop a little bit off of the left hand side. Not much, but but about mm -hmm. a third of the blue on the left yeah, hand take, side. Take it a little more left, yeah. Yeah. Makes the bird a little more prominent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I agree. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, in answer to your question, Maureen, uh, it just it depends if if the format of the paper you're printing on is is not nicely cropping your image then i i would move it into the board and, and leave a board and crop it the way i want but it's, uh it's kind of a dance uh you know uh, i well, just ran across that yesterday on instagram it wouldn't let me show full frame on some images and i just had to live with their crop and i, I still don't like it but i, I wanted to post the images um, but you, if you're doing your own paper, you've got the ability to do either. Yeah, I've cropped before, or not cropped, and just cropped to look and then wanted to print it. And of course, yeah, you've blown that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And then, then you know, you've got different formats if, you, if you're doing it multiple sizes to some, some of them are exactly well, proportional. So. The nice thing about it, if you're doing your cropping in Lightroom, you can go back. Exactly. You know, that is true. That is one thing that uh, Photoshop does. Photoshop used to do that, but they don't anymore. Yeah, they do. Well, they do. You got to uncheck. It? There's a there's a box you have to uncheck. Oh, you know, yeah, let there's me show you real quick. They just started that, but but uh they used to do it years ago, and then all of a sudden it wasn't I couldn't do it. Yeah. Right I now, liked having that. Yeah, if you can check, you can uncheck or check, I forget which it is, the ability, and it won't destroy, it, it won't erase the crop pixel. Wow, yeah, that's what I would like to have. Because I hate right. saving. So, so if we if we took this image uh, in Photoshop, okay. Mm -hmm. Um now we get our crop tool and uh you know, there's maybe we just want to crop it like that. You know, up here there's a content aware. Uh -huh. and, and delete crop pixels. Now, if I leave that check, it's going to throw all this stuff out. If uh, I uncheck it, then if well, I it's probably it's checked, crop, and I didn't even know it. I think yeah. I think it's checked by default. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Look up there. So, so now, if I want to, uh, if I want to go back and recrop that again, mm -hmm. I can stretch it out. Everything's still there. I loved having that ability, and yeah. was very oh. sad when I lost it. Is that a default yeah. setting, Sandy? Uh, I think it defaults to delete cropped pixels. It, so it, whenever you turn you that out, off, whenever you go into the crop tool, that there, there's a delete crop pixel. I and never saw it. that. And just, just make sure, sure that box is checked. unchecked. Well, thank you so much. Now, now conversely, oh. conversely, if you got a huge file and you want to make the file smaller and you know you don't need that, you don't want to re ever recrop it then that's a good tool to use mm -hmm. when you hit that it throws all that data out makes a smaller file right yeah so you got the option of doing either or a lot of times i save the original file and then i saved i save the edited one yeah so i can go back but sometimes i forget yep well, that's always a good idea okay ah nice cat Oh, very oh, nice. nice. Wow. Good shot. That's awesome. Uh, I should have gotten the the metadata on that one. Because <clears throat> that's not a a taken at a very long telephoto setting. We were in a, a vehicle, it's a young leopard, uh not quite full grown, although it looks like it there. And uh, uh, it and its sibling were laying under a tree. And uh, uh, we were probably uh, 15 feet from the leopard at most. Wow. And, and so, uh, uh, and I have about 100 pictures of that leopard <laughs> and my sibling. And, and that's the one I chose to be the best one. Nice. Uh, Excellent. Absolutely awesome. And uh, that one just looking right at me and and uh, all, it was really good. That was in a, a uh, that's in South Africa, Southern Africa, uh, actually it's in South Africa. Okay. Uh, it's at a game, private game reserve uh, that is adjacent to Kroger National Park. Oh, okay. It's but it's not in the park, so they don't the 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 guides didn't have to follow rules like they were. We we were way off off uh, road. We were out in the bush when this was taken. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess when we were there, they didn't have any rules because we were in the bush quite a bit. And the only time we saw a leopard, and it was about this close, was when we got stuck. And the guy and the driver, it was like an old Volkswagen minibus with the top cut open so you could shoot from out uh, up, up yeah. to the roof. And it got stuck and the guy didn't know how to rock it. 
so, so I got oh. <laughs> so I got in the driver's seat and I'm rocking the thing and these guys are all out pushing it. I look over their shoulders and there's a leopard in the bush about ten feet from them, just kind of <laughs> <laughs> wow. like you turkeys. What are you doing? <laughs> I I I had a different trip, but I had a leopard walk by the truck once, and I was sitting on the edge on the outside seat, and yeah. I could have reached down and petted it. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, I did. You, did. you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I might have reached down to pet it, but I might have come back without a hand. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he goes, oh, thanks for the snack. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's gorgeous. All right. It's, now, that's something I never saw up close. The hippo oh, are always at a distance. Let's just bring those in a little bit. Yeah. And the front one is not, the back one is in focus. The front one yep. Yep. didn't quite make it. Yeah. I think it really gives that back one a lot of presence. Yeah. If you had the front one in focus, I don't know. I think I like the back one in focus better. That, that, by the way, is a male and female, and they're getting it on. Uh -huh. <laughs> it looks massive. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. More people are killed by those guys than any other animal in Africa. I That's what I hear, yeah. They have uh, bad tempers. <laughs> yep. And they're huge. <laughs> and, and, you know, and they're strictly herbivores, but mm -hmm. uh, but one bite and you're gone. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or they crush you. <laughs> yeah, th th that's what I mean. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Two weeks ago, last time I was here, I had a picture uh, that was a, a broad picture of what I said was part of a herd of 100 elephants. Mm -hmm. That's part of that same herd, except it's a close up of just a few of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Somebody commented how they liked the babies. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was that you, Maureen? It could have been. I just think they're adorable. Yeah, they are. And and I, I made the comment that if you wait until I, I showed this one, you'd really like it because it's very that, that baby is just as cute as can be. It is. And just the the difference in size between the baby and the mom is yeah. just unbelievable. Well, it's probably ratio wise no different between a human baby and their mom. Mm, I don't know. It just seems bigger. <laughs> Maybe not because they're just so big. But, yeah. So, do you think these trips nowadays would still be as good as what they were when you guys were on them? No, say it again, Alan. Do you think the trips that you would get today would be as good as the ones that you guys were on? For me, it would be because it hasn't been but about four years since I've been there. No. So, so I don't think it would have changed that much. Yeah. Uh, for for uh, uh, the person who has Linda Gregory underneath their name. I saw that. <laughs> I was going to go and change it, but I figured she'd probably write me and say, why are you messing with my profile? So I <laughs> uh, but uh, evidently she uh, decided she wanted to put her name in there. What was it in that, what, uh, Sandy, wasn't it in the 70s when you went? Yeah, I was there in 72. So, so you're talking about quite some time ago then. Yeah. And so... Uh, 
certainly the cities and stuff would have changed. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I, I don't know that the Serengeti itself, for example, would have changed that much because uh, it's a it's a massive area oh, yeah. that they've left pretty unprotected. Uh, they yeah. left pretty protected, and so uh, it wouldn't be that much different. Yeah, and it's all the luck of the draw. I mean. <laughs> You, yeah. Some days you, you you see things that no one else has seen for months, and then other times you don't see anything. Yeah, you know. So you know, I, I would highly recommend going if you can. Uh, it was we, one of the best trips I ever took. We're, yeah. we're hoping to go back again, and we've been there on safari four times: twice yeah. in Southern Africa and twice in the Serengeti, Eastern so, Africa. So, which nice. where would you go back to if you were going back now? I go to the. I would make sure I got to the Serengeti. Yeah, I like the Serengeti. I like the Lake Minyara and the Girl Girl Crater as well. Uh, yeah. there, there's where you see the typical uh, massive amounts of animals. Yeah, the, the large herds in Southern Africa. Uh, you can see the same animals, but you don't see the big herds, and the, you don't see the migrating herds. <clears throat> But having said that, I think my best trip was my last one, which was to Southern Africa. So, mm -hmm. yeah, again, it's what what you get lucky or fortunate enough to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Al. Those are great. All right. Oh, let's see. I guess we could. Uh, Donna Maureen. I didn't do much this time, so it'll be fast. All right. Well, however it works. Uh, okay, that's you know, I did the numbering system and it still didn't do it right. Uh, yeah, it might it may have gone by uh, Okay, that's later. my original. Yeah. I didn't like the sky at all. So I yeah. went in and uh, replaced the sky. Yep. Yeah. I think you also darkened it up a bit. I did, and I uh, put a vignette on it, mm -hmm. and uh, I did some dodging and burning. I, I really wanted the saguaro to kind of pop out mm -hmm. a bit, and then the original one, it was just kind of washed out. Mm -hmm. That was my view at my other house. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, up in the mountain there. Where was that? Um, I lived by the Tortolita Mountains in oh, okay. um, Royal Valley. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm just wondering if you wanted us to stand out more, maybe you could, you know, mask just the cactus or maybe a couple of them, and uh -huh. add a little more clarity and and uh, and contrast or things to make it look a little more sharp than the rest. Have it pop out a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that's pretty easy to do yeah getting used to that masking yeah masking is wonderful gosh it's just you know i was talking to a friend i gave him one of my old cameras and i said you know with the editing systems we have anymore you just wonder if they're going to have robots taking the pictures and doing <laughs> the editing's pretty soon or retouching them <laughs> yeah because yeah. um this ai is Amazing. Well, I'm curious. Before I do that, let me, let me go back and see if I can select subject and see what it decides it wants. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, I think you go. That's, go. Bad that's really yeah. good. So we, we can do a subtract and just uh, yeah, take our brush and get rid of that. And then do an add the brush. And, Turn on auto mask and gonna just do this. Oh, and see, I wouldn't have done those. I would have left those less sharp. Oh, okay. Your choice. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's just Already personal. Them, so I would have, so it'd have a little less. So. Yeah. But you, you could start with um, clarity and see what that does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might help. 
That did, yeah. yeah. A little clarity, maybe some texture, I don't know. Maybe a dash. And, and mm -hmm. then you can certainly try contrast. It was a little too much. Yeah, I think so too. A little too much. Very mm -hmm. nice. You can really see the ribs well now. Yeah, so that would really draw your attention in as well. Mm -hmm. Well, my goal is to turn it into a black and white. Mm, okay. So having more texture. Yeah, that would help. Be good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Sure. Okay. And then this other one we started here. Yeah, this is a photo I took in 2014. Mm -hmm. I always liked it, and I just decided today to go back and reprocess it. That's the original untouched. And so I went in. Um, this is a gray horse that was a paint when it was born, and then it, they gray out and turn white. So I turned him back gray. <laughs> 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 and in his ears, there was a lot of orange and red because they get kind of sunburn. And oh. his warlock too. So I went in in um, Topaz Studio 2 and I brought down the reds and the oranges. And then I went and masked her out so that I could get her skin tones back. And um, I like that it took the red down a little bit. I went and added a little more highlights to her hair. I went and liquefy and opened her eyes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then um, she had a lot of shine on her face. So I went in with a paintbrush, put a different layer on and used the brush tool and just added a little bit of color to the highlights so it wasn't quite so shiny. Oh, yeah. You can see that. Good. Yeah, I think I'll post it and send it to her. She just now has had a baby. <laughs> yeah. So she might like looking back and seeing what she looked like. <laughs> that long ago. There you go. All of us would. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing those in. Thank you. All right, so we can work our way back up the list here. Jim Murphy. Antelope. Yeah, I, uh, I drove up yesterday to uh, visit one of the wineries and uh, along the way I saw these antelope and uh, I tried a number of different things. And uh, I, if I'd hung around longer, maybe I could have had that bull get his head up. It would have been nice instead of having his head down. But uh, ultimately, I, I, try, I tried a bunch of different things. I, I, my idea was get a real expansive landscape. Then the, they were so small, you couldn't see them. So this was kind of a compromise where you can kind of tell their antelope that uh, put that bull in there for interest. You, mm -hmm. you of course, know they're not antelope. Uh, they're not pronghorn antelope. They're, they're pronghorns. Pronghorns, yeah. Te technically, there's no antelope in North America. Oh, really? They're pronghorns, yeah. The, 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 right. a, there's animals in Africa that are antelope, and they're they're, they're in uh, the Indian subcontinent. They're actual true antelope, but and don't ask me why, but. I've been told that so many times, I repeat it. Well, they're gonna to have to revise that song, Home on the Range, then. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. <laughs> Somehow, pronghorn doesn't roll off the That's tongue. That's good. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well, does it? Yeah. Yeah, antelope is, uh, has been assigned to a lot of uh, North Americans. How far away were you from the bull? Quite a ways. Okay. I'm at uh, I'm I'm at 600, and then I cropped this way up. I'm a long ways away from everything here. I wish they'd have been closer. Because I used to have this app on my phone when I 
was hot and heavy taking photographs of horses and it would it would play horse calls so i could get the horse to look at me mm -hmm. and um because that's the hardest thing when you're taking their photos to get them to look at you and put their ears forward i wonder if they have something like that for cows hmm. that might be kind of fun to see if they did and then you could get the cow to look at you well i can move <laughs> there you go <laughs> did you try that no yeah, i didn't it kind of looked at you like what <laughs> yeah. i heard of a story was somebody was uh, doing the same with a bull elk and and seriously regretted it <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they used to make a bullhorn you could put on your car hey that would make them all look i can yeah. testify to that <laughs> well, I have a I have a birdie nap that plays bird calls, and for certain birds, if you play a hawk call, they just scatter like crazy. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if these are in order, but let's... it doesn't matter really. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, this is a uh, uh, archival redo. I was thinking about this and I was thought, well, I'm going to redo that photo a little bit. So you could see the details in her face a lot more. And I decided I wanted to kind of do away with that, but bring out the uh, the sunglasses and the bracelet and the uh, saxophone. So I got of, the hair too. It's yeah. really good. So cool. I just got rid of a lot of the detail. Like it. Looks like a poster, like a jazz poster. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice high key shot. Yep. They like the sunglasses. Yeah. You want to get in there and see what that reflection is. Yes. It looks like it's the outdoor. Yes, this is an outdoor venue. Uh, this was in Cuba, and I was sitting. Uh, it was a street restaurant, and uh, they were they were playing some Cuban jazz, and. Uh, uh -huh. So I was sitting under kind of a tent thing, but she was out outside. Yeah, so it's outdoor. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Has a lot of good energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> you gotta, you gotta oh, have at nice. least you gotta have at least one bird picture. So. That's fantastic. Yeah, this is a, uh, I, I, I kind of like this one, um, just the configuration here. So landing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> birds landing. So it's bringing the, going kind of vertical and uh, create drag and bringing the wings in so lose lift and putting the feet down, getting ready to land. So uh, you can see some little bit of, that's water from, I think, of uh, another duck that had landed in the air there. Okay. That needs a caption. Yeah. It's funny, your head looks kind of out of proportion. It looks yeah. small. I lightened the, I lightened up the, I think, if I remember correctly, I lightened the head up a little bit. It was pretty dark. Mm -hmm. But the wings are so enormous that it looks teeny. Yeah. Yes. Pretty amazing. Great shot. Mm -hmm. What yeah, lens did you use on that? I was using my, uh, <coughs> I use for birds all the time, 200 to 600. And I think I'm probably, uh, I'd be four, four to 600, probably something like that on this. So sometimes I back off from 600 when you're shooting flying birds at 600. It's a, it's difficult to track them. Now this one was coming right. straight at me. So, so that, that made a it a lot easier. easier, but when they're going left to right and, and you're tracking with a 600, it's, it's, easy to lose them mm -hmm. oh yeah and i think i darkened the background a little bit on this one too just to make the bird pop a little more mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. i just love the shape of those wings and yeah. then the light coming through the tail feathers is really cool yeah kind of coming through the foot a little bit too yep no No, yeah, maybe great. if you lighten the chest underneath the head just a little bit, yeah, maybe there. that's why why the head's looking so small is because it almost looks like it's separated from the body because the body's so dark. It does look <laughs> it does look kind of separated. 
So maybe either if you darkened the head a little bit and lightened the chest a little bit, they would look more connected and then you wouldn't have that illusion that the head is small. Yeah, maybe maybe 10 percent or something yeah. i'm not gonna lighten it too much because i don't i don't want it to blend in yeah. no 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 just just to give a dimensionality because mm -hmm. it almost looks like a black hole behind him now yeah because it's so dark yeah you could also if you wanted to cut the head out and make it slightly larger just to mm -hmm. balance it out No, that's really a lot nice. of our society would not like that. Yeah, <laughs> It'd be kicked out. <laughs> yeah. And and if you did it right, you probably wouldn't know the difference. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I probably don't have that much energy, but yeah. You know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to the next. On to the next one. We <laughs> cashed the duck over enough. So <laughs> Yeah, just oh. a little pond, little pond turtle mm -hmm. action with the with the reflection. Oh, very nice. That's nice. And that's real nice. Fun. Very yeah. nice. And that was shot at six hundred. These cross the pond a ways, and handheld too. Very nice. Yep. I like your background. It must be like weeds or something in the water. Yeah, they're kind of some kind of rushes. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they oh, were... not, in, not in the water. I'm sorry. It's on the land. Okay. Yeah. It's very nice. It frames the turtle beautifully. All right. I can move on to the next one. Uh, yeah, I shot this one yesterday in Box Canyon and decided to turn it into a black and white. Very nice. Yeah, that's cool. The sun was hitting the hitting the tree, but not the background. So it just I didn't have to do a lot of masking or anything. That's just kind of the way it was. Nice. Very nice. But, uh, the textures and the light are wonderful. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. I didn't do too much to this one other than there was on the left, there was some prominent brush that I kind of removed because I thought it was sort of distracting. I kind of toned it down. You can see some of it still there. Yeah. I would tone maybe these three guys down just okay. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even notice those till now. Yeah, I could knock those down easy yeah. enough. Yeah. Nice. There's mm -hmm. a real feeling of serenity. Mm hmm. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Jim Bowman. Hmm. Oh, I wonder why. Uh, did um, I sent in five? I was going to say, I thought you had more than that. What happened here? Sometimes uh, they go out of, out of order, too. That's very weird. Hmm. I pulled some Allens out because he asked me to. Nope, don't see them. Hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing those earlier. Huh, I have no idea what happened to them. Oh, Sorry wow. about that. That's okay. All right. Yeah, this is uh, an abstract view of, I put some flowers and arrange them and then put them under a glass. Oh, wow. And so, and then I just shot straight down. It looks like wallpaper. Very pretty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're just a kind of. This time I wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. So um, just took a. So took are you are over. you compressing them with the glass? Is that what you're Pardon? saying? Are you compressing them with glass? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're all Absolutely. kind of in the same focal plane. Right. More or less, they were stacked. Well, they had some like maybe a thin, maybe less than a quarter inch difference between mm -hmm. each uh, layer, but uh, they were mostly flat. So just a kind of a graphic look. Yeah, that's nice. 
Very nice. That works out nice. Did you do anything in Topaz or one of the other programs? Yeah, I just, I did do some and not very much, just mm -hmm. a slight touch. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Okay. So this was a view looking straight down, of course, on a, on a cactus plant, but then I decided to change the view. In other words, created a new layer, zoomed down or zoomed up, whichever way. And so each consecutive layer was a little bit bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and lighter and lighter. It's a great technique. I really like that. Kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, so nothing, again, nothing special. Uh, kind of, I think I did a little bit of topaz on this too. But um, again, just kind of looking at some graphic looks. The colors are wonderful. They all work together really well. Yeah, they do. And I like that your rectangles are not totally symmetrical. They're different sizes. Really okay. nice. All right, let's see this next one. Ooh. Oh, wow. Again, uh, looking straight down on a cactus. I think that's a saguaro, a little baby saguaro. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you just kind of get some different colors and uh, kind of playing around with it, really. Yeah, it punched it up quite a bit. Looks nice. Did you play with the hue then and the saturation? Yeah, yeah, hue and saturation. Very nice. Until you kind of got a, a look there. Well, pretty nice. I don't know where the others went, but that's okay. We'll, I'll tell you what, if, if you want, you can load those up while I'm talking to the next person. We can come back because uh, we've got plenty of time. We're, we're running pretty good. Okay. Yeah, if you want to do that. I'll see if I can do it on the other. Yeah. I thought I saw okay. a butterfly or something. Was that yours before? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, Don's was uh, was kind of odd too. He only had two in, and then he he loaded a bunch more in. So I don't know what's going on with Dropbox. It's weird. Hmm. First time that's happened. Well, speaking of Don, let's bring it up. Yeah, this is uh, Zabriskie's uh, Point in Death Valley. Mm -hmm. We went up there this last past week. And first day we was there was really good day it was real, very overcast and really made good for the colors and stuff and the last two days we was there why the uh, the winds kicked in and man i tell you it was it was windy you couldn't hardly get a car door open and stuff oh wow dust was really a fly yeah, i can imagine looks real serene now <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> it was a beautiful day The color palette's amazing. Yeah, that looks like. And then the blue in the background. I like the people on the trail. That's neat. You can get a perspective of the. Yeah, I, that's why I kept this one. I, I got other ones that have maybe a little bit more color in it, a wider range of color, but I thought the people were really, really added interest to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a nice pastel quality to it as well. It, is it tilted on purpose or? Uh, like you go to the background and you can tell it's tilted a little bit. Well, unless, everything's tilted out there, so I'm not sure. Yeah, unless it's an alluvial plain that's just going down there. That's not yeah, straight it, either. Yeah, it, it ran downhill, I think. But yeah, yeah. It's it's People are fairly vertical, so. <laughs> yep. 
Okay. This is up at Gates Pass. Uh, that the church is the uh, church in the uh, old Tucson movie studio. Wow. And uh, took a shot down from, from one of the hiking trails. And then I just was, thought I'd try some pastel oils and stuff, see what's what that does. So I, I changed it to an oil painting and then put a mask on it, brought it, and then brushed out what I didn't want to be an oil and, and lighten some of the other aspects of the oil. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Thank you. Actually, yeah. Such a contrast with the cactus in the church. Mm -hmm. like, I thought the church made the picture. <laughs> yeah, it, it does because it's unexpected. I like what the Topaz treatment did on uh, Palo Verde. Yeah, the, the regular <laughs> photo wow. I didn't, I just Pretty thought was kind of flat, it seemed mm -hmm. like it was kind of flat. So I that's what made me decide to try some oil on it. Yeah, it really brought it to life. Nice. Thank you. Okay. That's uh, another spot in Gates Pass. Uh, that one there, uh, I turned that into a kind of high pass filter and horizontal curve on it, and made it a black and white. And then I adjusted, adjusted the hue and saturation and did a lookup filter of uh, bleach bypass. Mm -hmm. And I mm, yeah. put a uh, mask on it and painted back some of the color. So the, the snow look is, is the bleach mm -hmm. mode. Ah. That's great. It looks so well done. You would think would it just, was snowing. I was just playing around and stumbled into it. <laughs> Good time. Yeah, I like the way it kind of eats into this mountain back here, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, and I added the sky, too. Ah, okay. Hmm. And a little bit of green just makes it alive, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought it made it seem more realistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was there a mountain that came across here that the sky ate into? Yeah, there was. There was a mountain, but the sky dropped down in on the mountain. Yeah. And I tried to paint some of the mountain back in, and it it looked bad. So I just kind of yeah. you could see the, the the edge of the mountain. So it's kind of like, well, maybe that's just the edge of the mountain coming through the clouds or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, you you've got a nice. And you can see it on the tip of the of the, yeah. Yeah, you, you can see it on some of the tips to too. And end right here. And then maybe just uh, you know use a healing brush to take the rest of this out. Okay. Yeah, I think that would help. Maybe you know knock this down just a little bit in here so it looks like it's receding and then disappears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That's a turkey buzzard that was sitting on a post I didn't know it was there here on a golf course. I shot this from my patio. Hmm. Uh, I added the oil texture to that and too, just to try to jazz it up a little bit. And then took the oil off of the, painted some of the oil off of the, uh, the turkey buzzer down and cleaned up some of the uh, trees or whatever they are in front of them so they didn't look quite so uh, painted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that looks like our neighborhood. We've got about like seven or eight of them that do that every morning. They're drying out their wings. Yep. Yeah. They're warming up. Yeah, warming up. Mm -hmm. For a kill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were in Mexico and they, I, they winter there and we were there in winter. And every morning there would be like 50 of them and they'd all in turn in unison towards the sun. As the uh, sun would move, they would move yeah, as well, warming yeah. themselves up. It warms and plus it also kills the bacteria. Yeah. Oh. Keeps them healthy. Yeah. We've, got, uh, we've got probably 100, 150 of them that hang around our town at the lake. 
-hmm. And then we have the winter fish killed and stuff and the ice comes off. There's yeah. dead fish laying everywhere, and these guys come in and clean everything up. So that's oh, bad. you see them everywhere. They they just fill the trees. Wow. There's one little town we used to go to dive to early in the morning uh, in Puerto Rico on the southern coast, and you'd come up over this hill to get over to the beach, and they'd all be sitting up on the top of the hill, <laughs> and uh, it was quite ominous. Yeah, pretty amazing how they're all facing the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice shot. Thank you. Oh, this nice. is just a shot in the uh, museum up at, in Tucson at the old uh, uh, courthouse. Mm -hmm. One of the displays that was on there. I just kind of liked the, liked the map with the I can't think what that's called now. <laughs> so sextant? Sextant, yeah. Well, yeah. sextant or, 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 yeah. uh, or surveyor tool. Surveyors, yeah. It's a surveying. Yeah. Yeah, I like the old levels and the, the compass in the base. Mm. Pretty nice. What kind of... Um... What did you use to turn it to the black and white, or was that the natural color? That's pretty much a, the color it was. Uh, okay. Uh, the it just it's an old piece and it's faded. Uh, it's beautiful color. I thought you did some trick or something. <laughs> no, not really. The the it's old bronze. You got the Let's display light shining down on it. I had to take the reflection out of the glass on top, mm -hmm. but uh, otherwise it was just a matter of lightening and darkening. It goes, nice. goes well with the, the background. Well, that's that's what struck me. I thought yeah. I, for what it did, the purpose of it was in laying, plotting out the the uh, streets and roads and stuff. So I thought with the map behind it, that would, turned out pretty good. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting that the uh, the map is our area. You know, you can see yeah, it, it is. The county. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, it is. It's from, it's from, I think it says 1883 or something. I couldn't like read that. it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's probably the old Kanoa Ranch there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. Thanks. Okay, Alan. I think I got the right ones here. Okay. Oh yeah, All right. All right. I was. Uh, it must be the the time of year where you go back and look at some old photos. <laughs> <laughs> this was from last summer. I was actually looking for something else, and and uh, this came up, and I hadn't processed this, so I just processed it here, and I think I've done a, a I've done a better job now than what I would have done six months ago. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, the motocross thing that I was at uh, in, in last August. Neat. What did you do in the processing? Did you did you blur the background? Or? I did. I, I blurred out the background a little bit, so just to get it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I had learned to do that. Some of the other shots, shots that are coming up will... will um, Oh no, it's not these other ones. But I had taken some other shots, and and I had uh, got this blurring to work really good for myself. So I thought I'd try it on this one. Hmm. Yeah. So was it the background masked out? Uh, <clears throat> and no, no, it's not masked. It's uh, well, it is. It is masked. I'm sorry, it is masked out, and and it's a. Uh, uh, just the speed speed blur that I added to one of the layers. Is that a motion blur or, or something? motion blur? Yeah. 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 Nice. Cool. So I'd, I'd used this before and, and, and it worked, but it didn't work all that great for me. But uh, this time uh, I've I had three layers going. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seemed to work. It, it's definitely crisped it up pretty good. So, mm -hmm. 
Yep, works out nice. Thank you. Wow. So yeah, so it um, it's not it's not because it's the Olympic Games, but this is uh, this was at the Olympic Oval here in Calgary. I'd set up a little meet with the for our camera group here, and uh, we're fortunate enough to get accepted in there. And uh, we six of us got in there, and there there was a whole bunch of athletes training, and. Uh, this is a short track, and if you can, if you zoom in a little bit closer there, son, you can you see the concentration in their eyes. These oh, guys are whipping around there like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, that was really nice. Pretty Thank intense. You. Yeah, that's a great shot. Yeah, uh, and then you, you look at flying off in the background. You get the, the ice flying yeah. off. Oh, it's not sorry. You can see the ice flying off in the air. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. They, they're zipping right around there. I, I like their gloves. If you look at their gloves, there they've got mm -hmm. little kind of knob things on their fingers, uh, where they've got their hands on the ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like to watch short track. That's that's a crazy sport. It's crazy. It is, yeah. I don't know how fast they're going, but they are moving. Yeah. Well, you can see the angle that they're at, right? So. Mm -hmm. I like the colors too. I mean, they just everything just pops right out off of that white eye. Colors and reflection, that is just mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, Thank that's you. great. I was right uh, right beside them. Like there was this was uh, my uh, 200 millimeter, 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Really? Wow. Yeah. And I'm really right beside them. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip down to this next one since it's in the same yeah. flavor. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is uh this is on the the long track with the speed scanning part, and I've got a whole bunch of them that I really liked, but I like this guy because of the concentration and the pose and the, mm -hmm. the darkness and just the, the color. eyes or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a pity they're wearing masks. That's all. So yeah. yeah. But, um, again, these guys are whipping around this ice like, I don't know, they must be doing about 50, 60, wow. miles, or 60 kilometers an hour. So. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I'm thinking maybe you could blur this just a little more so it's like this, okay. just to take some of the edge off of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's head down to this next one here. That's your wow. house, right? <laughs> That's uh, not my house, no. <laughs> it's uh, it looks like it? Dr. Jivago's house. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> this is actually the house of one of the ranchers that settled this area a long time ago. Can't remember when, but a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's now a, a very high-end restaurant, and it's in it's in this area of Fish Creek that I keep on referring to. And it had it was a kind of winter scene, but I took it into these neural filters, mm -hmm. and I put a winter scene on the winter scene. And oh, wow. this is what came out. Mm. Oh, nice, yeah. a cool, a kind of cool shot. Yeah, I was going to ask if you put a, a, a lookup table on it or if it was a neural filter. So yeah, you know, I like the I like the the blue toning. Yeah, mm, yeah, real nice. It was really nice as a black and white. Actually, it was a really nice shot as a black and white. Mm -hmm. There was a lots of Almost detail in there. Yeah. So this neural filter put a nice effect on it, but it kind of blurred a lot of the details. So. Yeah, I I would think yeah. Okay. And this is one of the statues that is very close to this area. And uh, it's where some of the previous ones have taken the monuments of these uh, North American Indians or indigenous people. Or this is a, 
I think. This statue is probably about eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a couple of, the whole statue is, is like a, her family. But um, I just love the expression on her face and, and the eyes f from, you know, uh, being a sculpture, it's, it's just got really good effects in the eyes here, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice expressions. Yeah. I changed the sky on it just to kind of make it a little bit more moody, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Try playing around with that mask choking on there, luminaire a little bit there. I can't remember what they call it exactly, but you can see that interaction. Yeah. And that may help it a bit. Okay. That's nice. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um I think that's it. Jim, did you load any more in? Yeah, I, I loaded the yeah. Did you? yeah, I think I see them here. Let's see. There's this one. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at those. So this was a, a trip to the Butterfly Museum, I guess it is, up in Phoenix. I don't know if some of uh, some of you been up that way there's like it's an arborarium or whatever they call it that mm -hmm. had like hundreds of butterflies inside and so it's a photographer's paradise <laughs> what a contrast in the flower and the butterfly it's just pops beautiful cards now they have that nice one in Tucson as well. There's a pretty good butterfly place, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were on Swan near Grant. Trying to yeah, the there. difference is, is there's about probably three times as many butterflies in the one up in Phoenix. Thanks. Is it is it a little bigger space wise yeah, too? Bigger and just definitely uh, more varieties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the one here is uh, a little tight. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a little bit yet it would help that one a bit. Yeah, I, I can see that now. Mm -hmm. Should have been, especially up at the top. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this one was just uh, also, um, I found that, you know, with a macro lens, I brought a 60 millimeter macro and um, it's amazing. I, I would lose a focus between the body of the, uh, the butterfly and the uh, wings. Mm because they were down, you know, they would kind of do a narrow uh, thing like a V shaped mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. down there by the body. And I could get the body, but I couldn't get the, uh, not without, you know, using a tripod and going through all kinds of craziness. Yeah. So what would you decide to do? What would you do to fix that? With Is there anything? I don't know. Al uh, said he tried uh, doing focus stacking, but it was more of a landscape he handheld. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah this just is... don't know being this tight if you could do it. And um, not so much, you know, if you move side to side a little bit, you could auto align in Photoshop, you know, uh, the, the thing, but if you move in and out at all, it's gonna change quite a bit. So it might be difficult. You know, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the only other thing to do would be to, you know, mask this area off and, and, and cheat it with some apparent sharpness um, by uh, using clarity and kind of like we did on the cactus earlier. All right. You know, we could do something like that. Um, 
we're basically uh, I'm going to turn off barriers of uh, auto mask and uh, I'm just going to take a big brush and just kind of blow this in and I can always get rid of what I don't want later but I just want to see what the feeling is going to be like okay then, uh, let's first see what contrast I do a little bit might help a little bit take some of the highlight detail down there you go you're getting some yellow in there now and yeah. purples and stuff. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it kind of makes it nice and then, and then it, it actually clarity. does make it a little more interesting yeah there's your clarity kick that up a bit and yeah, maybe even a little texture but uh yeah i think that picks it up huh very good yeah so, so that yellow was there but you just didn't just didn't yeah, you can see it but it, it really pulls it up um and, and maybe I'm a little dark there, but uh, yeah, it looks a little dark. You know, you could adjust that too. You yeah, can come in sure. here and maybe, maybe uh, pull the blacks up slightly and uh, take the whites up slightly, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd do, especially after the fact when you get home and you can't reshoot it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So that, that might be your saving grace on that. Okay. Nice. Yeah, let's see. I uh, found some other interesting ways of dealing with highlights being blown uh, that I tried out. I kind of came upon it by accident, but let me just show you something here real quick. Move this up here. So basically, You can see the difference here between the, the blown out one here and, and what I ended up doing. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, I tried it in uh, in Lightroom first, you know, by darkening it and then changing the color temperature and getting it, you know, kind of along the same color. And then I tried adding some grain, but the grain was all one size. I couldn't make it big or small mm -hmm. or randomize it much. But I found that in Luminar, you can. So mm. I took it in the luminar and uh, it gives you the ability to do it there. Let me just show you real quick. Uh, is this the right one? Hang on, let me get back to. Right, there it is. So let's just quickly do one area so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, so if you go down to film grain and just play with it and just look in the highlights, there's a size and roughness. So you can start playing with the size and then roughness kind of randomizes it. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. So the film grain acts like it's bringing back the details. Yeah, yeah. Instead it, of just darkening the right, instead of just trying to darken it, get and then I you like can. That. Now it's everywhere on here now, so I would just use a mask and and um, and paint it in where you want it with a brush, so that mm -hmm. you know, for instance, it's it's mostly just. You can see it's just there. Right. And then, uh, you know, so you can just put it where you want it. So that's basically what I did. But see, I went too far there. Uh, um, then, you know, it's just black and white. So if you go into toning, you've got um, shadows and highlights and amount. So you can you can pick up the saturation and then change the hue. 
maybe somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And then do the same thing, just paint it in where you, whoops, come on back here. Paint it in where you want it with a mask or copy the mask that you made before so you don't have to do it over again. But since I didn't do that, I'll just paint it in there real quick. But you can see the difference here. Mm -hmm. and, and then once you have that, you can, you can start tweaking it a little better and figuring out if it's too green or too, too pink and get it just right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's magic. Something that could, you know, help you when you got some blowing out highlights and you want to mm -hmm. tone them down a little bit. I think that's the, the number one problem that I see in my photography because I do mostly outside. Yeah. I, well, in this lighting too, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> it happens a lot. Okay. I got a few. Uh, I got a few more doorknobs, so. Thanks for that, thanks for yeah, sharing. Yeah, sure. So let me, let me get in here and we'll just show those off. So that's the whole one on that guy with the oh. toning in there and everything. And uh, moving on to the next one. I like uh, these little spiky areas in this one and then the, mm -hmm. almost like a Greek key in the background. Kind of fun. Wow. And this one's it must okay. have been all individually made for each each of these homes. Oh uh, yeah, I can imagine. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's almost like a stirrup. Yeah, it does look like a stirrup. like it. I really like the patina on this one. I do too. It's got a lot of nice texture and color. Mm -hmm. Patina and rust. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a little more. Quite curious to focus on this and I played around a little bit to bring this up, but I think I can probably do a little more. Oh, and I I guess I didn't mask it off over here. It looks like I, I made this stronger than it should be. So I have to work on that a little more, but I kind of like the angle of it. Mm -hmm. Kind of ominous. Yeah. That's a, still a work in progress. Same with this one. It was it was really getting soft. I, I used uh, topaz sharpening and brought it, brought it up a little bit. Is that a cork they have in their mouths? Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? No, it was a uh, a rusted like oh. post, but yeah, it looked like someone just popped some corks yeah. in, like, in their teeth. <laughs> it's kind it's of bizarre. so perfectly round. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a I like wine the fact that, that the first one's sharper yeah. and the second one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I mind it. it. It was considerably softer, though, so I brought it up enough to kind of at least keep it in the realm. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it could use a little more vignette, too. Oh, uh, yeah. This was more of an elegant door. Mm -hmm. That's that's a door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not getting through that one. <laughs> I see the keyhole in there. <laughs> yeah, that's a big door. And then these are the big knockers here. Wow, yeah. they don't show up as being. No, they're, they're part honest. of a design. They're yeah. very integrated, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Integrated instead of being surface mounted. Yep. Yeah. This was just kind of a fun, <laughs> fun door. Yep, I think that's it. So when's your one man door show? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, you ought to do one. Yeah, I probably should. You got plenty yeah. of them. Yeah. Oh. Hang on, let me. That was great. Thank you. 